Our hunters have received a newly updated super that we have never seen before until now. The Gathering Storm Super allows users to throw an arc staff at a target or the ground and create an arc electrical field that will damage whoever goes into it. Its usage is good with capturing small areas or preventing combatants from charging at you, but its main success is the ability to impel someone with it. Using this as a boss DPS strat is highly functional and very much wanted for all players to give a try. So what happens when you combine Star Eaters with them and dedicate yourself to just that? You get an absolute boss killer capable of inflicting high damage within a short time frame, and in today's video, I'm going to show you how to do just that. But before we do that, you know who else loves big, meaty damage with a side of barbecue sauce? This channel right here. So why not leave a like, a sub, and turn on your notifications for more content like this in the future? I would really appreciate it. Starting with subclass, we will be using of course the Gathering Storm Super so we can expand on this usage as a boss DPS monster. The Hunter's subclass update doesn't allow us to improve the super's capability any further, just like how a void and solar can only offer so much. So in this case, we will of course need to upgrade our ad clearing option and the ability to create orbs so we can get our needed stacks going and make it repeatable within a few minutes or less. For this, I have chosen to use Flow State, where defeating a jolted target makes me amplified. While amplified, our dodge ability charges faster, reload speed is greatly increased, and you become more resilient while dodging. We then have Tempest Strike, where sliding on the ground, then using your melee, sends a vertical arc wave in front of you. For Fragments, you'll want Spark of Ions, where defeating a jolted target creates Iron or Trace. Spark of Resistance, where being surrounded gives you more resistance to incoming damage. Spark of Shock, where your arc grenades jolt targets, and Spark of Focus, where after sprinting for a short time, your class ability regen is increased. For stats, we have 17 Resilience, 19 Discipline, and 15 Strength. As the build doesn't have a specific key area of stat you need to invest in, you can pick and choose which stat is best to focus on and use throughout. I chose to use Grenade, as I plan to use this with bad juju and ashes to assets for faster super energy return. So for key mods, we have Elemental Light which allows us to create a well upon super kill, Bound of Well for plus 2 mods created, Fond of Wisdom for plus 15 intellect, Elemental Ordnance for creating a well via grenades, and Radiant Light for plus 20 in strength. The stats on the subclass section are very simple to cover as nothing specific needs to be invested in to make this build work, which is great for those who like simple templates. The only thing to worry about is how much super energy you will get in, how quickly you can get your next one, and how fast you can make orbs of power as all of these will affect your gear in one way or another. The only difficult part to be aware of is landing a super and not dying, but this can be easily avoided if timed right. For weapons, we are running with an art based gear setup that is great for DPS and ad clearing and you'll want to take note on the weapons I use, since they can influence how you build, can function in end game. For our primary, we have the Bad Juju Exotic and is still one of the go to weapons to use when doing a super focused build. The build allows users to build up super energy and damage per kill for each string of curses you get and this is very helpful in something like raids where you have a boss to take on but at the same time you have to take on the many ads spawning in. It's such a neat weapon to use as each kill made will auto fill your weapon and pretty much allow you to keep firing non-stop with little to no care in the world. Although it might struggle in much higher gear content such as Master Raids or GMs, it can still be useful if you get the damage buff going as that's all you really need to keep the weapon both strong and flexible. For a secondary, we have the Midas Reckoning Fusion Rifle with Unrelenting Reservoir Burst, and you may have heard about this weapon quite a lot recently. The weapon can roll Reservoir Burst, which is great with ad clearing and such, but the main potential of the weapon is the Origin Trait Rune of Over, which allows users to overflow the weapon while nearby allies. For some reason, this affects Reservoir Bursts and pretty much makes it so that you can shoot off 2-3 to three Reservoir Bursts before the perk effect is gone, and this is amazing for anything with a heavy amount of combatants coming at you. I got lucky with the following roll, which is slow but usable. If you have the red borders of the weapon already and you can craft it, then do so as you'll be missing out. Otherwise, the plug one, if you manage to get one, can roll the perk but can't get the origin tree at all. For heavy, we have the hothead with tracking and explosive light, which is an amazing combo to have when you're running bad juju and star eaters. The damage you can pull off with this can be immense in the right environment, with the fallen combo capable of inflicting at least one third of a gambit boss health in one go. At the same time, I've chosen to use it so we can keep collecting orbs of power with star eaters even when they're at full, as it seems like at the moment, the moment you have a full super, you can keep collecting more orbs as you go along. Weird design choice, but it works very well for the build combo in mind. 
for your stats, as mentioned, we don't have a specific goal in mind for the stats section as we have the main key things already put in place. However, we can focus on the stats to improve our survival odds while out on the field, in case things go wrong. For example, my resilience is at 70, as I know with the use of spark of resistance fragments, I can utilise the damage reduction to survive pretty much whatever is chucked at me. And then combining that with concussive damner and thermal shot plating pretty much means we can tank a lot of things. We can of course increase this further by 80 or 90 if we can mix some of the stats around, but we need to be careful with this and not take away from the key stats too much. For discipline, I've kept mine at 90 so we can spam storm grenades multiple times. This will help quite a bit as storm grenades have a short cooldown tied to them, making me have a high discipline worth the investment. At the same time, we will be using Ashes to Ashes mod to build up super energy rear grenade kills, and this will also trigger elemental orders and create wells for me to use and feed back into my ability as I see fit. With this and bad juju alone, we can gather a ton of energy relatively quickly that should sustain us until we need to use our super and need to rebuild it back up again. We then have strength which will be used for dodging targets and getting us amped up. Having it at 50 is more than enough to keep you going as we'll be relying on our grenades the most to do the necessary damage. Ideally, if you have the Radiant Light mod available, then this will hugely help you out with getting the stat to its needed level quickly, but at the same time not all of you will have this very rare mod on hand. If that is the case then don't worry, as adding on the outreach and wanting to finish your mod can easily help you with getting your melee back up to full or near full. Also, since our build does focus on using our super a lot, using the 1 2 finishing mod is great to have as backup since we can negate the damage it does. Left over wise, we have Harmonic Siphon mod for allowing us to create also power via Magic Elemental Type and Rocket Scavenger mod for increased rocket reserves. Now, with the main basics covered, let's take a look at the mods we are using and how they play within the build. For Head, we have Resilience, Ashes to Assets, Harmonic Siphon, and Elemental Light mod. Arm, we have Discipline and Battle for World mod. Chest, we have Discipline. Thermal Shot Plating, Concussive Damner and Frontal Wisdom mod, Leg we have Resilience, Rocket Scavenger and Elemental Orders mod, Cloak we have Resilience, Outreach Times 2 and Radiant Light mod. The Gathering Storm Super has been pleasantly surprising with it being the first Arc Hunter Super that is projectile based. It can do a lot of damage when aimed at one specific area, but its main success is when it's used directly at a boss. That's when the damage starts to become common and highly effective what it does, so you have the impact damage and then the continuous damage afterwards. I've been using this build in King's Fall against War Priest and Oryx, and as long as you don't lose your stacks, the damage can be very useful with downing them much more faster with your team members also wailing out. You can get around 100, 200, 300 or even 400k plus overall damage from one super alone at times 4 Feast of Light, which is huge in itself but can be bigger. The only reason why this isn't bigger is because these are being bugged and only allowing us to stack up to that damage alone. This may seem bad but you're still getting a 55% super damage buff while at stage 4 of Feast of Light and 55% is still worth using over nothing. And another good thing about it is that even at this level, you don't have to worry about putting so much effort in and then losing it all because of a silly mistake as it's quite small. This to me fits perfectly for those that like to move slow but still do huge damage without worrying about dying so much, or in this case here, you dying a lot but not worrying about how many feasts of light you have. I would say the best thing about the build though is that you can freely use whatever weapons you like as long as you stick with it being arc, and you still have an option available to get your super up and ready. Just small things like this allows you to take your time with your loadout and enjoy what you have, instead of needing to switch over and try something better. No matter the stacks you have, this build will do well in endgame and above. So if you enjoyed the video then please leave a like, a sub and also follow me on Twitter to keep up to date with more general Destiny news and builds. Once again thanks for stopping by, stay safe and I'll see you all in the next one.